And a good Saturday evening to you. I'm meteorologist Nicholas Roboso with an update on the tropics. We now have Tropical Depression 10. And as of the 7 o'clock Central Advisory, this Tropical Depression almost stationary here. Actually now, one mile per hour, just off the coast of the Yucatan here in the Yucatan Channel. This thing's pretty much just going to sit here for the next few days and we're just going to be watching it. Now this thing has the potential to move to the north and it will likely impact Florida possibly as a hurricane. So let's break it down for you here. We're going to start with the satellite presentation of this storm. Taking a look at it on the 3D satellite, you can see some of the banding features in the taller cloud tops. However, over the past few hours, it's lost some of the thunderstorm activity in the center. However, some radar from Cancun is indicating that there is kind of a smaller, smaller complex of thunderstorms near the center of the storm. So some things going for it, some things going against it. It's in an area of very light wind shear right now, but there is some wind shear, so it doesn't have the perfect environment just yet. But as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, the environment might get a little bit more organized. There's a look at that full screen for you on the 3D satellite. You can see those tall thunderstorm cloud tops there. Now, the main thing steering this thing right now, well, it's kind of in between some things. It's an uh, empty pocket of steering flow where the steering flow is very, very weak. So we have our heat ridge over here. We had extreme heat today in Mobile. We have Franklin sitting over here. And overall, the flow is just much lighter aloft here. Therefore, there's not a lot of steering currents to let this thing go. So where are the forecast models taking this thing right now? Well, there's been a lot more consensus, a lot more concentration of the models in recent hours towards the big bend of Florida, anywhere from Apalachicola, kind of towards kind of the more rural area of the big bend there. And overlaying a different set of plots on it, this is the GFS ensemble plots. You can see that there is some consistency, kind of near Apalachicola really, for landfall of this system. So nice to see some consistency on the forecast models. In fact, in between the GFS and European, also we've developed some consistency. It lingers around all the way through Monday. This is Tuesday and it's just now in the center of the Gulf of Mexico getting its act together over the Eastern Gulf. Then by Wednesday, 7 a.m., we have two circles right next to each other indicating that there is consensus in the models between the GFS and the European that this thing is likely going towards the Big Bend of Florida. However, it is very likely that there will be some shifts in the forecast track and there will be windshield wipering back and forth, but it's nice to see that we have a little bit of consistency at this time. Wednesday, 11 a.m., significant impacts likely for the Big Bend region of Florida. Now, the intensity of this storm is likely is unknown at this time. It, National Hurricane Center pins it as a category one hurricane, but we're in warm waters and light shear, so that has the possibility of change. We'll need to watch this really closely. Residents in Florida will need to be making their plans and having them in place ready to go. And then as we head towards the end of the week, this thing actually dissipates over land or goes out over the open waters of the Atlantic. The Carolinas will need to watch this for sure. So to kind of review for you, 30 mile per hour winds right now. Let's take a look at this official hurricane track from the National Hurricane Center. As we can see, Tuesday at 2 p.m., a Category 1 hurricane, then landfall early Wednesday somewhere in the Big Bend region as a hurricane most likely. What strength? It's still hard to tell right now but National Hurricane Center going with Category 1. Here's kind of the main summary for you here, kind of what you need to think about if you're, especially if you are in the Florida panhandle, if you're in the Big Bend region of Florida or the Florida Peninsula, impacts lightly, likely in the red area. So make sure you're paying attention there. And then as you go into the yellow area, just make sure you're keeping an eye on it. The Fox 10 viewing area encompasses the Mobile area and the main thing for us, we're just going to be dealing with some rip currents most likely and also maybe a slightly increased rain chance, especially on Tuesday. We're going to be watching that forecast very closely. Here's a look at the Mobile Area Rip Current Risk Forecast. And as we can see, medium as we get towards Tuesday, Tuesday night, that becomes high. Those water temperatures are very warm. For the Mobile Area, rain chances floating around 40% on Wednesday. And that's kind of what we're going with with the current modeling. However, those numbers could change, so keep it tuned to the forecast. One great thing for us in the Mobile Area is that our temperatures will be going down in the coming days thanks to this system. So here's a look at the seven day outlook for Mobile. And as you can see, we just keep those rain chances around. We'll be watching the forecast very closely for this storm. 
Tropical Depression 10 right now, but the next name on the list is Idalia. We'll be watching it very, very closely here at Fox 10. Thank you for tuning in for this late, late tropical update. We're about to get on the news on Fox 10 News after the game, technically Fox 10 News at 9 p.m. We'll see you there.